Hello everyone and welcome back. Now today I have a few little jobs that I want to do. There's a brand new birdhouse which I want to put up on the side of the shed. But first I need to plant it up with these alpines. There's also lots of purple sprouting broccoli that need harvesting. I'm going to harvest some leeks. I also want to direct sow some poppies and hopefully I'll have time to plant out my gladioli. But it's such a beautiful morning. And I haven't been on the allotment for four whole weeks, so I'm very excited to get stuck in today. I absolutely love mornings on the allotment. It's my all time favorite time to be up here just because it's so peaceful. There's no one else around. The birds are singing. The sun's just trying to come out. Um, and it's just so peaceful. The only problem is the occasional car noise um, from the road just over there. But um, apart from that, it is my favorite time to be up here. Uh, but do not let the sunshine and the blue skies fool you. It's still rather chilly and we are forecast a frost um, early in the week. So um, try not to rush out and sow seeds too early or plant out seedlings too early because it will be devastating if we get a last minute frost. Um, it will just wipe out your poor little seedlings which you've been working hard to grow. Um, so yeah, try not to rush out um, and do other jobs instead, which is what I will be doing this morning. So the first thing I want to do is plant up my new birdhouse. Now I've been eyeing up this birdhouse for a few months now. So I finally treated myself <laughs> um, and it's actually from a UK based seller and I follow him on Instagram. He's called Liam but his business is called Loldeen Timber and he makes all these beautiful wooden creations um, at his home in Norfolk, I think he is. Um, but yeah, I've been eyeing up this birdhouse so I treated myself and I purchased it in the Cupronal Shade Sweet Pea. Um, I don't know why I've got a thing with pink at the moment um, but I thought it would look really, really nice against my purple shed and also I'll be plant, um, putting it up, not planting it up, <laughs> putting it up on the side of the shed where the clematis is and the clematis is a nice pale pink colour so I thought it would blend in quite well um, but I don't know if you noticed but there is a space on top for planting up. Now it took me a couple of days to decide what to plant in it um, I was going to sow some wild flower seeds in the top, but I thought that um, they would grow too tall, they'd flop over, and I didn't think it would work. And I was trying to look for a dwarf wildflower mix, but I couldn't find one. The other alternative was planting up with succulents, which I really liked the idea of, but I wanted something that was flowering, so the birds could go in the house and the bees and the insects could enjoy the plants on the top. So I went to the garden centre yesterday. Um, I spent about a few hours in there and I came out with a couple of new house plants, um, some seeds, these two plants um, and we had a cream tea as well because you cannot go to a garden centre and not have tea and cake. <laughs> um, but anyway these are the two plants which I've decided to put on my birdhouse and they are alpines um, and the great thing about alpines is they aren't too fussy um, and they don't really like rich soil so they can be grown um, in rockeries they can also be grown in the crevices in walls which is why I think think they might be okay on top of the birdhouse because there's only two inches of soil there they haven't got that much soil really so um, I was looking for something that 
could be grown <laughs> um, in a shallow depth. So I chose an alpine saxifraga um, and this has like a beautiful bed of like almost succulents and it's got flowers on top so they'll be good for the bees. Also I thought the white would look quite nice against the pink. And then I also chose a sedum um, and this one's called Mackin Mackinoy and it flowers in late summer with these yellow flowers but I absolutely love sedums. We have one in the front garden. The colours are just so beautiful and I think they go really really nice together. So we're going to pop one one side and obviously the other one the other side. What I am going to use is just some compost from home. I've also got some grit which I'm going to be mixing in with it but if you have any sand that would be perfect. Like I said the alpines can be grown in quite poor conditions so um, you know you don't need any rich nutrient filled compost um, just any old compost with some sand or some grit in it. So I'm going to plant them up and then pop it on the side of the shed but I'm so excited to see what it looks like. So excited. And there we go. I need to bang the nail in a little bit more, but it was making quite a lot of noise um, and it's still quite early on a Sunday morning. Um, so I didn't want to annoy any of the houses um, around the allotment site. So I will bang that in a little bit later, but I'm so happy with it. So, so happy. So I've made sure that I have nailed it to the bar that goes down on the inside of my shed just to give it that little bit of extra support um, but no I'm really really happy with it um, and it's also the perfect height then for me to water the um, alpines in the top but like I said the clematis has been planted here um, so hopefully it's going to grow up um, and over and onto the shed um, and yeah just give it a little bit um, of a nice secluded feel so hopefully the birds will move in soon um, but no I'm really really happy with it it looks really really good so on with harvesting the purple sprouting because I need to get that home for the roast dinner So it is purple sprouting broccoli season um, and it's one of my favourite seasons. Now purple sprouting broccoli is relatively new to me. I actually first grew it about two years ago. Um, I didn't grow it last year um, because the brassica bed was a complete mess and there were no brassicas that year. Um, but it's one of those things that I feel like I need to grow. It's one of those staple things um, and I just, I absolutely love it. It is a bit of a long-term investment. Um, it does take a whole year for it to produce, but it's so worth it. The taste of homegrown purple sprouting broccoli is just, it's so intense, it's so delicious. Um, and as you can see, I have quite a lot to pick. Um, I was away for four weeks, um, but luckily I think I've just about caught this bunch here. 
um, but yeah there's quite a few here um, and this one is just about to produce as well so it's actually worked out rather well um, I need to research some purple sprouting broccoli recipes um, because there's quite a lot to pick here um, but I'm just going to pick all of it that's ready because like I said this bit um, is starting to go over now we're going to have some for our Sunday roast dinner um, and then I will figure out what to do with the rest uh, later today um, because I don't want it to go to waste but this variety is called claret I am growing some more this year but I think it's just an early purple sprouting broccoli variety so um yeah like I said I have to grow purple sprouting it's one of my favorite things to grow and to eat Now, my leeks were looking rather small um, before Christmas um, and I always use the second growing season to grow my leeks. So before in this bed there were potatoes and then when the potatoes came out I put in my three rows of leeks, my two rows of Swiss chard and I also had two rows of turnips which have all gone now. Um, and as you can see the Swiss chard is doing great as usual. We've been um, using the leaves throughout the summer and the autumn um, and obviously they're cut and come again so they just keep on coming back um, and they're doing really really great. Um, but yeah the leeks they were really really small so I left them to see if they would fatten up a little bit and some of them have so the weight was definitely worth it. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start picking them even though quite a few are still small um, I'll still use them but today I'm going to pick a few of the bigger ones to have with our Sunday roast with the purple sprouting um, but yeah I love leeks absolutely love them this variety is called muscle borough um, and it's a variety which I grow every year every year I do the second growing season Some years are better than others when it comes to the size of them but again that all depends on the weather that we have. They're still not the biggest leaks that you've ever seen but they're gonna be delicious with our roast dinner so I'm just going to pick a few and then head on home So the last thing I want to do today is add a little bit more to the flower patch. Um, not that it needs any more, it's just I forgot to put in one rather special bulb and it's one that I do grow every single year but it's the one I always forget about um, and they've been dotted around the cut flower patch for the past two years now but I keep digging them up, moving them forgetting where I've put them or just digging them up and leaving them in the shed and they just rot um, so they've been rather neglected and that is <laughs> gladioli now I've got two new bags from Wilco um, and I've just planted up the pastel mixed variety just in front of the trough here so there's a bunch here a bunch there a bunch there and a bunch here um, so 
I think they look really, really nice come late summer. I think they flower from around July to September. Um, but I just really love the pastel colours. So there's a white, a pastel pink and a pastel lilac. They just look so stunning and I think they look really nice. They're lined up against the trough. Um, obviously the tulips would have been and gone. Um, the alliums would have probably been and gone as well. Um, so the gladioli can sort of take over. Um, but of course there will be annuals in front as well. Um, so I've just planted the bulbs um, about six inches deep and roughly four inches apart but like I said I planted them in bunches so I think there's bunches of four or five all along there um, they are really really nice cut flowers um, you just need to be wary that they are quite long so they are a little bit awkward in a vase um, but obviously they're good for the wildlife and for the bees as well so um, yeah looking forward to seeing them bloom um, the other mixed variety are just sort of a bright mix, so I might scatter them around the patch and label where I've put them so I remember. Last thing I want to do with this little area here is just sow some poppy seed. And I was meant to do it um, in the autumn, but I completely forgot so um, I'm just going to sow them now and if they grow then they grow, if they don't then um, I will hopefully remember later on this year to sow some. Now this is an unknown variety, the lovely Zoe from Delicately Edible, um, she sent me these poppy seeds um, because she bought a bouquet from a shop and they had a giant poppy seed head in them and I absolutely love poppy seed heads. I think they're even more beautiful than the flowers. Um, so she kindly sent me some of the seed, um, which is what's in this bag. She sent it in a nice little packet, but the packet ripped. So I'm gonna attempt to try and get some of that out. I'm just gonna directly sow them onto the soil on top of where I've just planted the gladioli bulbs. Um, if I can get them out the bag, <laughs> that is, let's see. They are sticking to them. I think what I might do is just sort of empty them out. Because you can always thin them out if they start to grow. I don't usually like direct sowing flowers. Um, I just, I prefer to sow them in pots at home. So I know what they are, where they come up. <laughs> I get a little, still get a little bit confused and I always think that I'm gonna be pulling up weeds or thinking that they're weeds and but I'm gonna direct sow these poppies and cross my fingers and hope that I get some giant poppy seed heads later this year. going to brush over the soil just to cover up the seeds, give them a little bit of a chance to grow. And this area is officially jam-packed. But hopefully they all grow well. I mean all the alliums have come up which I'm so happy about. Um, these two at the end, um, they bloomed last year and they are the purple giganteum. And then these two bunches in the middle were planted last autumn. So this will be their first year blooming. And they are a white variety called Mount Everest. Super excited to see how they turn out. Um, but yeah, 
another job done i think the last thing i'm going to do is just show you all the daffodils that are in bloom there's not that many but um i'm quite happy about them let's pop these somewhere So the tulip trough is looking a lot better than it did last year. Um, I was so gutted last year when my tulips just got all that tulip fire and they didn't amount to anything at all. So it's nice seeing it all lush and green. Um, the only thing I am worried about, um, there's some quite massive holes in some of the leaves, like they've been nibbled, but I'm not sure by what. Um, but there's only a couple um, so fingers crossed that they'll be okay <laughs> the only problem I'm finding with it now is that they're obviously going to bloom at different times because these two rows here are very near to blooming whereas all the other ones all the tulips are quite far down um, hidden in the leaves so hopefully they'll have a bit of a growth spurt with all the sun we're having um, and they'll shoot up and they'll grow some stems because they haven't got any stems at the moment, which I'm a little bit worried about. Um, also, the daffodils at the back are taking absolutely ages to bloom. And I planted these all, um, I think it was November, mid-November. Um, but yeah, the daffodils are just taking ages. I mean, the, the little delicate yellow ones at the back are blooming and they look absolutely stunning so I'm happy with them um, it's just these ones are a bit late but um, they are coming they'll get there just a little bit later I uh, say so yeah really happy with the tulip trough really really happy and um, the other daffodils which I planted were some by the entrance by the gate um, I'm really glad I planted them there they look so nice and I love it when you walk through the main allotment site gates and you can see my gate and see the yellow daffodils. It just looks really happy. So I'm super glad that I planted them there. There's also some in a tub uh, in front of my shed and they are planted as a bulb lasagna. So there's uh, daffodils in there. There's also tulips and there were snowdrops and crocus in there as well, but they bloomed um, a month ago now. So the daffodils in there are out and they're called Thalia and they're, um, they've got multi-headed but they're really nice pure white. They're absolutely lovely. This is their third year blooming so um, they've done really, really well. And there's also a lemon balm in that tub so it is pretty jam packed. Um, I also planted a few daffodils down in front of my shed in the grass because um, I had some spare and they're blooming and they look nice. So. Um, yeah, lots of daffodils on the allotment this year, which is good. Good for the bees and good for my soul because they do make you happy. They do. And I mean, on a really sunny day like today, it actually feels like spring. I mean, it was officially the first day of spring the other day, um, but it just, it feels like the growing year has officially started and it's really exciting really exciting and I'm happy with where I am at at the allotment at the moment I feel like I'm on top of it apart from the raspberry canes I need to dig them up and weed that area there but apart from that I'm happy with where the allotment is at the moment I'm just so excited for the year ahead so the garden shows will start at the end of April. The first one is the 19th of April and that's at Fell Place. Um, and then I don't think we get a break until June. <laughs> um, but we're doing a few big garden shows this year. RHS ones, we're at RHS Chatsworth, um, Malvern, Tatton, and we're also doing Hampton Court Palace. So yeah <laughs> a little bit nervous about that one but i'm really excited because it's such a beautiful show um, but anyway i'm gonna stop talking i need to pack up and head home for the roast dinner but i really really hope you enjoyed that video and i will see you all next time <laughs>